Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This is a moment I have been waiting for, for a long time. I'm going to try and make my own winter coat. I have been dreaming of one of those beautiful vintage, longer than knee length, kind of flared out winter coats that would go beautifully with all of my skirts and dresses, but they are so hard to find. And when you do find them, they're usually super expensive or not made out of the right materials or both, or there is just one little element that I don't like about them. So I want to make my own. I got myself this pattern. This is Macau's M6800 and it features a couple of different versions of winter coat and the one that I plan to make is this one down here. It is view D and that one comes with a detachable hood and buttons up all the way down the front. I do like this type of front better but if there's one thing I've learned in my 25 years as a Dutch citizen, <laughs> it is that a coat that doesn't close all the way up and doesn't have a hood is pretty much useless. Yeah, the weather here just does not allow it, especially when combined with lots of cycling, which I do do. So yes, this is gonna be, if I do this right, my perfect winter coat. Now, of course, I'm not gonna make it purple. You guys know me. I got myself a beautiful, beautiful fabric. Here it is. Ugh. Gorgeous brown wool. I love it. I love it so much. This is, aside from my wedding dress fabric, which I did already buy, by far the most expensive fabric I have ever gotten. I had to get five meters. <laughs> and this is pure wool, which means that it is not only precious in a monetary way, but also obviously this is an animal product. I am not a big fan of the wool industry at all and I try to buy wool very sparingly, would not do it at all if there was a good alternative. I don't feel like there is at the moment. So I want to treat this material with the utmost respect and do this right. There is no room for errors in this one, especially cutting. I wanna make sure I use this as economically as possible and I use all the leftovers and everything. So I also got some lining with that which matches surprisingly well considering I got it online. <laughs> so that is what I'm going to use. Now this pattern includes a ridiculous amount of pattern pieces. There are 18 or 19 pattern pieces in the pattern. I won't use them all for mine. I think there are maybe two that I don't need to use, <laughs> but I will need loads and loads and loads and just the actual body part just contains loads of pattern pieces. And since sizing of commercial patterns is always something I struggle with, I was really, really, really careful with this and I took some precautionary steps before I started on this video. So I measured myself, measured again, measured again, <laughs> looked up reviews online on you know how the sizing comes out and everything. And apparently Mikhail's patterns tend to run a little bit small. So I did actually stick to the sizing on the envelope this time and I'm making a size 12 whereas I am normally a size 10 sometimes 8 so that should be good. Something else I've never done before but I did do with this pattern is I actually I cut out the actual pattern just straight out of the package. I usually trace it and cut it out then but this time I just cut it straight away because that was just too much and it would have taken three days <laughs> to copy all of that and I actually made a pattern fitting thing. So Let's see. Welcome back to dress form. I tried to fit it on the dress form. I pinned all of the pattern pieces together and it seems to fit really nicely. Fingers crossed. There is still a little bit of ease around the waist, but it does look nice and tailored and snug. And I really, really like the fit of this. Please ignore um, this. If you remember my customizing my dress form video, I didn't pad out the shoulders enough, so they are a bit shorter than they are on my body. So the next thing I want to do is take this off the dress form again and actually try it on myself so that I can get a good look at the length as well. Because I do really want this to be that really nice kind of 50s length. It's just below the knee kind of calf length and I might need to lengthen it. So let's actually try that straight away. I'm gonna use my handy dandy new wrist pin cushion here to take out these pins. 
But if this pattern fits on me as well, then I will feel confident enough to just get started, cut everything out of my actual fabric and knowing that it will fit. Okay, this is quite hard to do on yourself, but I think this should fit. Even with clothing on, let me move you down a bit. I really like this, look at that volume. You know, I actually think the length is fine. I think if it's longer than this, then, well, that will be good as well. But I think, I think it's okay at this length, actually. I do like a little bit of my skirts popping out from underneath. Okay, so let's start laying this out on the fabric then. There are some small alterations, I guess, that I do plan to make. So this is the view that I want to make, view D. And as you can see, view B here has a beautiful high low hem. What I plan to do is to use the back of the hem of uh, view B and use the front of view D. So when you look at the pattern here, this is the bottom of hem D and this is the bottom of hem B. So I would still get a little bit of a high-low hem, but not nearly as pronounced as it would have been with B, because the hem for B ends up here. See, so I'd get this much extra length. And I do like the longer length in the back, especially when it's not as pronounced. I think that would look really cute. And I am also considering adding the belt from view C, just because I really like belts on my coats. But we'll see about that much, much later in the process. Taking a little break from sewing here to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor because this video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. They allow you to explore new skills, develop existing interests and get lost in creativity. I recently followed a course called Self Portraits, telling your unique story that was taught by Tabitha Park. This was a really quick 30 minute course that went through actually a surprising amount of information and kind of on how to do good self-portraits, everything from, you know, coming up with a concept, telling a story, all through kind of technical photography skills and also editing. This was a fantastic course, actually, I think, for someone who would like to take their Instagram to the next step, maybe. And it contains some new information, even for me, and I've been doing this for years, so definitely recommend checking that one out. When you're taking a course on Skillshare, you can connect with other students who are also following the same courses, as well as the teachers, to create a sense of community and to have people around you that will guide you through the course, which is really, really nice and encouraging if you like that kind of group learning setting. It's been a strange year and I feel like learning new skills, getting creative, kind of polishing any existing creative hobbies that you already have is a great way to kind of put some structure into your day, find some focus in your life and Skillshare really helps with that. You could even set aside a certain amount of time on a set day of the week to follow a course over there and do the assignments and everything. Skillshare kindly offers a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership to the first thousand people who click the link in my description box. And after that free trial, it is only around $10 a month, which is definitely worth it in my opinion. So whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. And just a heads up, they also have some sewing related courses that you can go check out if that is more your jam. I wanna give them so thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's move on with this project. I am losing light. It took all day <laughs> to just lay out those pattern pieces and cut out my pattern, but I managed to do it. And one of the reasons why it took so long is that I did actually decide to lengthen the pattern after all. I added 15 centimeters to the bottom all around and I decided to no longer do the subtle high-low hemline. So it's all the same length now. And adding those 15 extra centimeters will make the dress or the coat actually come down to below where most of my dresses end because I tend to make my dresses more or less the same length 
all of them and now it should be just slightly longer than the dresses and I think that'll just look really nice and also like you know pretty long coats on myself so I think that was a good call and since I did have all of that extra fabric I was able to do that but it did mean that I couldn't follow the kind of pattern placement suggestions from the instructions anymore because obviously my skirts were both longer and wider than they were supposed to be but I figured it out in the end and I was able to leave pretty big chunks of fabric uh, left over to make something else with um, if I would so desire. So yes I do still have to cut out my lining pieces but I'm gonna wait to do that because this was very physically taxing, much more than I anticipated, if I'm honest. I was pretty shocked by how hard this was on my body <laughs> to do all of this, but I was hunched over for hours today. Um, so I think, you know, it's time to stop here. So tomorrow I am going to start assembling and I'm really, really excited about that. And then I will just do the lining pieces once I come to that, but I don't think we'll get there for a few more days. So yes, this is it for today assembly tomorrow. I will see you then. Guys, this project, it requires an insane amount of prep work. I have already spent two days just prepping. I haven't sewn a single thing and I am still not done at all. There is so much more prep work still to do. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop doing it now because it's driving me crazy and I actually want to sew something. So I have not yet transferred all of my markings onto my pattern pieces. I'm gonna do that as I use them. I still haven't cut out my lining, but I did go to the market this morning. I got some interfacing, which I already attached to the appropriate bits, which this is the front section, the front center of the coat. I got my buttons and everything. So yeah, I should be able to finally start doing something. <laughs> which I'm very very ready for. First step here is to attach the front to the side front. We are finally gonna start doing some sewing here. I stay stitched along the side here as well and from here on I think it's mostly just gonna be assembly for a bit so I will just you know keep on sewing everything together and check in with you when there's something interesting to share. Don't worry guys, even I would not make a coat without a pocket. <laughs> We're doing pockets and it's gonna be one of those kind of hidden inside a seam type of pockets again, which are a little bit complicated. So let's hope I get it right the first time this time. I had to redo this last time, but I think, I think I'm on the right track here. <laughs> Okay, it's the next day and yesterday evening I was able to pretty much assemble the whole thing. All of the long pieces are attached. So we have a front, we have a back. Let's try it on. I really, really, really hope this is good. Okay, I love it. I think the size is all right. I'm still considering doing the belt in the end, but I absolutely love it. I am glad that I lengthened the coat because I really like this length and it's gonna be hemmed. So it's gonna be a little bit shorter than this. This is the length, this shorter bit. That's gonna be the final length. I do think I maybe got interfacing. That's a bit too stiff. I asked for the stiffer kind, but this is maybe a little bit too much. <laughs> but that's okay, at least it's um, 
gonna be nice and durable but yes it is time to move on so next step i believe is the collar and the sleeves and then it's time to get started on the lining let's see how much i can get done today It has been 10 years. <laughs> no, it's been less than a week, but this coat, so much work. But we're getting somewhere. I attached the sleeves. I have fully lined the entire thing. I basically had to make the whole coat again out of lining fabric. I then uh, attached them together, flipped them inside out. All my seams are pressed. My collar is on. I even finished the hood. So that is good. So now we're on to finishing touches. I need to hem this, which I am a little bit nervous about because the hem is not quite even all around, I think. Or maybe just not enough. Um, <laughs> let me take off the hood. So that's the next step. Then I need to attach the lining by hand. It's gonna be substitched in place here as well as inside the sleeve. And then I need to attach the buttons. And I borrowed my parents' sewing machine for that. Um, one which does more than just straight stitches. And that one should have a buttonhole maker. So I'm gonna use that to attach the buttons. And that should be me done. I'm trying not to be too optimistic because I think that might still be a lot of work. I have to figure out how that sewing machine works. So yeah, <laughs> still a little way to go but making good progress. So I more or less finished the hem. I am quite happy with the length. Um, and then I realized something. I pulled out that sewing machine that I borrowed from my parents and I realized it didn't have the manual <laughs> with it. It does have one of those button making feet, a button foot, but it's not automatic. And there are several settings that you have to go through in order to make the buttonhole. And I don't think I can figure out how to do that without the manual. Besides, a little birdie told me that I might be getting a very nice computerized sewing machine for a certain holiday that's coming up pretty soon. And I think I might like to hold off on putting in the buttonholes until I have that. And I think this would be a good way to kind of get familiar with that sewing machine once I do actually have it. So I think I'm not gonna try and, you know, do this and possibly mess it up or do it by hand or just anything and wait until after Christmas to put in the buttonholes. But since I do want to be able to wear this coat now, I thought I would just quickly attach some snap buttons to the insides here. Or at inside on one side and of course outside on the other. So that it is wearable. I'm just gonna do a couple along the front and that will be the project for now, I think. It will result in a wearable coat. It already looks really nice. I think it looks very sleek and pretty without anything down the front as well. So I think that'll be nice for now and you know completely wearable. So I think I'm just gonna do that and then wait with the very last finishing touches until I have the option to actually make good buttonholes. 
<laughs> with my new sewing machine. So, yeah, let's attach some snap buttons here. Well, guys, here she is. <laughs> this has been a journey. It took me so long to do this. This was an easy pattern according to the packaging and I must say it wasn't hard to do. It was just a lot of work. All of the pattern pieces for a full circle skirt coat. I mean there was a lot. There was just a lot but it didn't require that much technical skill I think. It was pretty straightforward. I really liked the instructions on the pattern. Um, it was easy enough to follow and I do think, you know, even people with less sewing experience which I do still consider myself one of, um, should be able to do this pretty easily. I really like how it turned out. It is not finished, obviously I still need to do the buttons, although I do like the snap buttons as a temporary solution. Only temporary because they do snap open really easily, which isn't practical for daily wear. But I do think it looks really nice and elegant. With the collar, it can be worn down or up for a nice windbreaker <laughs> type of thing. But yes, it is very, very comfortable. I think it's a little bit big on me, especially around the, like I think maybe the back is a bit wide. And this is something that I did find in one of the reviews as well. Someone said the back was very wide, but I don't think I mind that too much because now at least I can wear loads of layers underneath it, which I do think is very important in especially a winter coat. I love the pockets. Those are super cute. I think I just snapped open a button. That is why this is not a long-term solution. <laughs> if I were to do this long time, I would need stronger snap buttons. But look at this twirl, guys. Look at that twirl. Have you ever had a coat that twirls like that? I sure haven't. Yeah, I absolutely adore it. I love the length. I'm very glad I decided to lengthen it. I think it is at that perfect kind of 1950s length right now. One thing I do regret doing is putting in that super stiff interfacing. I think that definitely should have been less stiff because now the front is just kind of weirdly pointy. <laughs> Maybe, but then again, I don't think it's super noticeable. And I do still think it moves nicely. So yeah, I don't think it's bad enough for me to go in and uh, redo that. It is not finished. And in order to finish it, I still need to attach the hood. I have the hood right here. And I didn't want to do that with snap buttons because I'm probably not going to be wearing this coat that much before I get the buttons in. But this is what it would approximately look like with the hood. Which I think is a very cute look as well. The pattern originally calls for sewing the hood to the inside of the collar which is a little bit odd to me, it doesn't make much sense because then if it's actually raining, all of the water will just drip down the hood and straight into the back of your neck, which is just weird. So I am probably going to attach the hood whoops, to the outside of the collar, even though it's maybe not as pretty. I need this to be practical at least a little bit because otherwise what's the point of having a hood? And I have decided that I do definitely want to make the waistband. The belt with this. The, one of the views comes with the belt, not this one, but I do want to add one because the coat is a bit on the larger side. I don't think it's, you know, way too big. Uh, I think one size smaller would have been on the tight side, but I do think it would be nice to be able to cinch this with a waist. And I do really like that extra waist emphasis, so I do think I will add a belt here even if it's just to break up the shape but I do think it's very nicely fitted as it is already and I like the, the lines here it's very flattering so I'm definitely very happy with this and I can easily see this becoming one of my favorite coats once it is actually completely finished oh I love it so much <laughs> I'm very very happy with it so I think I'm gonna end the video here for now and I will come back with an update, finish this coat up to the belt and attach the buttons in the hood and everything after Christmas. So probably sometime in January after I have my new sewing machine. So for now, I want to thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more sewing videos and beauty and lifestyle. Thanks to Skillshare once again for sponsoring this video. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.